Hi everyone, Tiffany here with another scrapbooking process video and today I'm going to be using the April kits from the Hip Kit Club. I have the main and the embellishment add-on, the cardstock add-on, and then some extras from my supplies at my house. It's the same products I've been using for all of the process videos you've seen so far and this is the seventh one that I've done with this kit. I'm starting here by trimming down um, a half inch off of each side of this black paper, which is an Amy Tangerine Plus One paper that came in the kit. And I'm going to put it on the, a background of white cardstock to make a frame. And I believe that white cardstock just came from my stash, but there was some in the kit. I just used it all. Then I'm taking my photo, which is a four by four of my middle son, and I am just going to mount that up on this black and white diagonal paper. It's also from the Amy Tangerine Plus One collection and you saw me trim off the uh, little excess that was formed by cutting a circle out of it and that was from my last video. It's got the green with the white um, asterisks on the back. So now I'm just using some Distress Ink in Black Soot to ink up the edges and I like the way that that makes everything more cohesive and helps it to pop as well. And at this point, I think I'm going to be doing basically a black and white layout. So that's why I chose the photo. It isn't a black and white photo, but there's not much color in it because it's a little bit of a low light and he's wearing a black onesie. And that just kind of uh, makes it fit, I think. So uh, this is a big decision here. This Amy Tangerine Plus One paper with the circle cut out of it. I'm trying to decide how I want to use it. And I decide to make it the actual background with the black paper as a narrow frame as well. And it's got this circle cut out of it. So I know that my photo doesn't quite cover it, but I think that using some other papers, I might be able to come close. So I'm trimming it to kind of minimize the size of that circle. And in hindsight, I wish I would have actually trimmed the other side because I love the way that it looks with the black peeking out of the little tiny bits of that circle that are left. So I wasn't being brave, and I wish I would have been brave because I really like the way it turned out. And now I know for next time. Um, so I'm inking the edges of that now and I'm actually going to ink inside the circle because I think that it might show on the final layout. I'm still sort of hoping to cover it up mostly but uh, that way it's at least visible. And I decided to go with putting it on the bottom left so that I could showcase that little bit of green and yellow watercolor that's on the page um, and still make it pretty easy for the eye to follow across the page. So I'm just using my ATG to adhere that down and I'm being really careful on that little skinny strip to not rip it. Just going around the edge of that circle and trying to line it up as best I can. Uh, like I said, this is the seventh layout that I've done a process video for, all using that um, April kit from the Hip Kit Club. And this one was pretty easy. It actually took me under an hour. I think even with some dead air that I end up editing out at the end. Even with the dead air, I think it was only about 45 minutes. So it is a pretty quick layout for me and it's not much my style. There's a lot of white space that ends up being left, but I really love the way it turned out. So I wanna try to do that a little more often. Uh, this green paper here is from the Studio Calico Lemon Lush 6x6 pack and you can see that I've stamped on it and cut some punches out of it so I'm just using the edge and I'm trying to do some really narrow layering just little tiny bits poking out from either side and not a complete square. Um, a ton of my favorite YouTubers do this. Mercy Tira and Tuesday Hubbard and Kitty Scrapper and Eric Langraff whose name I totally butchered just now, I'm sure. There's lots of people who do this, and so I'm, I'm trying to experiment with it a little bit here. And I really love the way it turns out, so I wanna do that a little bit more. Um, the yellow vellum that you saw is from the Lemon Lush pack of vellum three by four cards. And then the one that says number three, or I'm, I'm not sure what number it is. Yeah, number three, there you go. That piece is uh, from the Studio Calico Lemon Lush Ephemera pack. And I'm just adding a little bit of Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive there, and I'm going to put it over the scrap of this vellum. And that's going to make it so that even though you see the edge of the N under the photo, you also see the vellum and then the black behind it. So just kind of adding some interest and lots of different layers there. And I'm really liking the way that that's turning out right now. So I was happy with my choice to use that piece of paper as background, even though it had the big circle cut out of it. This black and white paper is also from the Lemon Lush collection and it's Wordsmith. 
and there's a lot of just kind of basic text that your eye reads as background. But there's also some images and some more um, distinct phrases, so I'm cutting some of those out. There's a sketchy heart that I'm going to detail cut a little further, and then the phrase I have there says, the best is yet to come, and then always also. And I'm just fussy cutting out this little heart, and I'm trimming everything else up so that it's more square. I've got that um, question mark 3x4 card, which is a jelly bean soup placemat, and I actually never use it. It is in my Kelly Kit video as something that never gets used, so um, that's back in my stash. This is the back side of the wordsmith paper, and I'm, I'm cutting it out looking at the black and white side so that I can make sure that I'm not cutting into any elements I want to use later, but I want this strip to go behind the photo cluster, and then I'm going to actually mat the word always on a strip up in the top right as well. You may have noticed that I put the adhesive on the top of that piece, and that's because I haven't committed to where I'm going to adhere down the photo cluster yet, but I know that I want it all to stick together in the way that it is. So that's a little trick that I'm sure everybody already knows. Um, again, I'm just inking the edges. I just want everything to look as cohesive as possible. And it also helps things pop up against all that kind of monochromatic background. So I know that I want this phrase to be with the photo, but I also don't want it to be just completely all square edges. So I grab this hexagon punch. I think it is an EK success punch. And I just punch out some basic text and put that behind my little phrase that says the best is yet to come. And I'm feeling like things are a little bare, so I'm going through my die cuts and um, frames and things. And I'm mostly pulling things out from the piece of paper that's called Loyalty, that's from the Lum and Lush collection. I pull out a few things from the ephemera pack as well, though, this butterfly mainly. And I'm just looking for greens and yellows inspired by that uh, watercolor piece that's on the background paper. That's kind of influenced my whole color choice. So that is where that little green square at the top and the green butterfly are going to live. I'm going to cut out this yellow camera, but it doesn't make it on the final layout. I do fuss around with it quite a bit. I try to find a place for it, but it just doesn't work out. What does work out is the rectangle at the top there that says I've got sunshine, but I'm going to trim it down a little bit. So one thing that I did a bunch on this layout, and I'm trying to do more and more, is to use things that have shapes punched out of them, the negative space more often, and then also to cut into die cuts and project life cards and that sort of thing to make them work for me and to cover them up to make them work for me like I do with the green square on the top left. Um, the more I do that, the more use I get out of my supplies and I stop looking so much for the perfect embellishment and so that has really helped me to enjoy the supplies I have much more. So you should give that a shot as well. Lots more inking inking of everything. I'm about to start gluing stuff down, about to start committing to things here. So I'm going to use foam adhesive tape to adhere the photo cluster and that gives it a little more dimension. You can see my enormous roll here. It is by Scotch and I buy mine at Amazon. It was about $28 when I purchased it with free shipping and I still have a ton left. I've had it for a couple of months now so I think that was a pretty good deal in the end. I do want to say that it is not acid-free, and I am not a real stickler about acid-free, especially if it's not actually touching my photo, and there are a lot of layers of paper there. Plus, I'm not scrapping originals. They're all digital, and I have them backed up in a couple of different places. So, um, I've, just in case anybody had that question. Um, what I'm using for the next two little pieces, both the phrase at the bottom and the butterfly at the top, are square foam tape, and those are by Best Creations. And they're just smaller and easier to use for these little tiny pieces, so that's why. And then I've got my small tape runner here um, that is acid-free for anybody who cares, so are the foam squares. But my real motivation there is just that it's um, smaller and easier to deal with when I'm working with these smaller pieces. And that one piece does actually get adhered straight to the photo. So I like to use it acid-free when it's actually on top of the photo most of the time. I'm real real strict on my rules about that, as you can see. Um, so I'm going ahead and I'm just adhering down all these little pieces at the top. And basically the way I already had them. And again, I'm 
kind of mixing between my ATG and this smaller tape roller just based on whatever seems easiest. And I'm still trying to find a spot for this camera. Um, I am not successful. And it really, it does not end up on the layout in the end. So. so now I'm just looking at it and I'm feeling like it's a little empty and it's a lot of white space and I'm trying to think of how to fill it. So my first go-to is always ink. This is the Citron um, Heidi Swap Color Shine. And that came in the color kit, which I didn't purchase, but if you purchase the color add-on, that is the spray that was with it. I just happened to already have it in my supplies. And now I'm grabbing some really narrow washi. Um, this washi cape, washi tape, excuse me, is from the Amy Tangerine Plus One collection. And I pulled it to work with this kit. I'm grabbing the green and the yellow. And I'm just adding a little tiny bit at the bottom of that the best is yet to come phrase and another little bit at the top of always and that's giving me some balance and it's also just sort of adding a bit of color to those black and white I was gonna say die cuts they're pieces that I cut out of paper can you call it a die cut if it really wasn't cut with a die I don't know I guess for the purposes of this video yes we can so now I'm just taking the yellow and I'm making journaling lines up at the top right. Again, I'm just sort of trying to fill in the space a bit and I'm tucking the ends beneath that background paper. And I'm going to be journaling on those using who, what, when, and where. So uh, I don't actually write the W's, but I know that they're there. So the who is Jack at nine months old and the what is looking cute. The when is June 6th, 2013, and the where is Grandpa and Gigi's room La Quinta in Prattville. So that's my very exciting journaling. And then I'm going to add some green washi tape to help those pop. But I don't think I do that at this point. I think that happens a little bit later. I apologize. It's been several weeks since I did this. Uh, between making this video and narrating, I found that finding time in my house with a six-year-old, a two-year-old, and a six-week-old where it's quiet enough for me to narrate is like really hard. So I think I'm done at this point. I'm showing you the close-ups, but it sits on my desk and I come back to it because I feel like it's not quite finished. Um, and you can see here that the color has changed because it's another day. And I think actually my initial part happened at night and this is during the daytime. So I apologize for that. So here's where I'm putting the green on those journaling strips and that really helps them stand out a lot more. I really like the way that turned out. And there's a lot of pause here as I think. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull out some sequins. And these came in the kit. I'm pulling out just a few smatterings of yellow and green. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them on a diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. And then another little cluster up by that uh, top right grouping where it says, always, I've got sunshine. And I'm doing this pretty randomly. I usually try to kind of do things in threes, but because I know I'm going to be adding quite a few different things, I am just scattering them among the ink splatters and just with the idea that they'll kind of be at home in the randomness. I'm using some tweezers and I put some Scotch quick dry adhesive. Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry. This is Matte Multimedium by Ranger. Um, it's a Claudine Helmuth product because I've heard that this works better for keeping sequins stuck down. So I just put a little bit of it on this tiny piece of scrap paper. The problem with doing that, as you can see, is that I knocked it upside down onto my page, but it makes it a lot easier than trying to actually put glue on the back of each individual sequin. So this is um, a really good way to help make sequins easier to get adhered to your page. Now I'm going to my punches and I'm grabbing the Martha Stewart punch that has the three little butterflies. One is kind of medium sized and two are pretty tiny. And I love this punch for making embellishments. I think butterflies are a pretty universal motif. And yes, I absolutely use them even on my boy pages. So, so take that. Um, I'm punching that out of the same green paper that is from the Studio Calico Lemon Lush 6x6 paper pad. And I'm just arranging them in the same manner that I did the sequins, just sort of scattering them randomly around um, in that basic diagonal and then putting a few up in the top right cluster as well. 
um, I edited out some time where I was looking for these. These are little tiny foam squares, and they're also by Best Creation, and they're one-fourth of the size of the bigger squares. And I am just using those on each butterfly wing so that the butterflies are not glued straight down onto the page. They're actually sort of popped up. And that Claudine Helmuth matte medium got everywhere. It's a tiny little squeeze bottle, and it just, it was all over the place. And that probably is because I used that teeny tiny piece of scrap paper. So if you saw me touching those to my arm, I just, I had glue on my arm. <laughs> I just decided to use it. Um, the medium-sized butterflies are getting that foam behind them, but the little ones I'm just sort of bending in half and only gluing down the center of them. And this, like I said, was a few weeks ago that I actually scrapbooked this page, and they are still holding strong. So I think that that worked, uh, partly because that medium is so strong. Probably a glue gun, like a hot glue gun, would have been a better choice, so I might try that next time. I've decided I needed some yellow, so that little rectangle is just another one of those cut-aparts from the loyalty paper from the Studio Calico Lemon Lush collection. And even though there's writing on it, I don't care. I just punched the butterflies out. And they're tiny enough that you can't really see what anything says. There's just a little bit of interest to the yellow. And, I'm... and now the layout is done. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some close-ups of the details. And it's not terribly focused, so I apologize. I'm trying to get it there we go so now you can see hopefully you can see by the shadow that there's some dimension on all those little butterflies and there's my layers i didn't actually do any dimensional adhesive behind those but because there's vellum and the different textures i think it turned out pretty well and there's my little journaling hate my handwriting but i use it on all my layouts anyway i figure someday maybe my kids will like it better than i do that is as close to a title as I have. Always I've got sunshine, which isn't grammatically correct, but I figure that's okay. Next, I'm going to show you some still photos. And as always, those are available at my photo bucket and Pinterest, which are linked below. I'm also looking for an online gallery to start using. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Post a comment. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you all will have a wonderful day.